calculate the molar heat capacity of helium gas. Now, let's derive the formula that will help us to get the answer. So imagine if we have a container with a fixed volume, and there's some gas particles in this container. Now we're going to add a heat to it. All of the heat energy that is transferred to the gas molecules, it goes to increase the kinetic energy of the gas molecules. So understanding that, if the gas is held at constant volume, by the way, the heat energy transferred represented by Q will equal the change in the kinetic energy of the molecules. Now Q is equal to NCV delta T. This is the molar heat capacity at constant volume. And the change in kinetic energy is 3 over 2 NR delta T. So we could cancel delta T and we can cancel N. So for a monoatomic gas like helium, the molar heat capacity is going to be 3 over 2 times R. A monoatomic gas is a gas that is consistent of a single atom per particle. A diatomic gas would be like N2 or O2. There's two atoms per molecule. So for this problem, it's 3 over 2 times 8.3145. And so for helium, the molar heat capacity is 12.47 joules per mole per Kelvin. And so this is the answer. So for any monoatomic gas like helium, even neon, the molar heat capacity is going to be this number. Now it might vary a little but for the most part that's the answer. Number two, estimate the molar heat capacity of nitrogen gas. So now we're dealing with a diatomic gas molecule. Now for a monoatomic gas molecule we saw that the molar heat capacity was 3 over 2 times R. And for monoatomic gases like helium, neon, and argon, these gases have three degrees of freedom. They can move in the x direction, in the y direction, or in the z direction. So they only have translational energy. They don't have any vibrational or rotational energy. But a diatomic molecule like N2 can move in the x, y, and z direction, like a monoatomic molecule. However, it can bend, it can stretch around itself, like the bonds can stretch or bend, it can vibrate, and so it has different degrees of freedom. Therefore, the molar heat capacity for a diatomic gas is greater than for a monoatomic gas. And it turns out that nitrogen gas have five degrees of freedom. So the molar heat capacity is going to be 5 over 2 times R, as opposed to 3 over 2. So this represents the number of degrees of freedom in a certain sample. So it's going to be 5 over 2 times 8.3145. And so this works out to be 20.79 joules per mole per Kelvin. And so that's how we can estimate the molar heat capacity of N2, nitrogen gas. Number three, a certain complex gas molecule has seven degrees of freedom. Calculate the average translational kinetic energy for a single molecule at 300 Kelvin. Now you need to be familiar with the principle of equipartition of energy, which basically states that the velocity component of a gas molecule, each velocity component, has an average translational kinetic energy of one-half Boltzmann's constant times the absolute temperature in Kelvin. So for a monoatomic gas like helium, which has three degrees of freedom, it has three velocity components, Vx, Vy, Vz, 
the average kinetic energy for a single molecule is going to be 3 over 2 kT. So in this case, we want to find the average translational kinetic energy for a complex gas molecule with 7 degrees of freedom. So it's going to be 7 over 2 times kT. So it's 7 over 2 multiplied by Boltzmann's constant, which is 1.38 times 10 to the negative 23 joules per Kelvin per molecule. and then times the absolute temperature, which is 300 Kelvin. So let's go ahead and plug this in. So this is going to be 1.449 times 10 to negative 20 joules per single molecule. So that's the answer for part A. So one molecule will have an average translational kinetic energy of 1.449 times 10 to the minus 20 joules. Now part B, what's the average translational kinetic energy for 5,000 molecules? So it's going to be 7 over 2 times the number of molecules multiplied by Boltzmann's constant times the absolute temperature. So in this example, we have 5,000 molecules. And just as before, the units for Boltzmann's constant is going to be joules per Kelvin per molecule. And the temperature is 300 Kelvin. So always pay attention to the units so you can understand how the equation works. So the, the unit Kelvin will cancel and the unit molecules will cancel as well. So we're going to get the total energy in joules. You could also take the previous answer in part A and multiply it by 5,000. That will give you the same result. So this is going to be 7.245 times 10 to the negative 17 joules. And so that's it for part B. Now for the last part, we need to calculate the molar heat capacity of this complex gas molecule. And we know that it has 7 degrees of freedom. So what is the formula for the molar heat capacity with, for a substance that has 7 degrees of freedom? What would you say? So it's going to be CV but instead of 3 over 2 R or 5 over 2 R, it's going to be 7 over 2 times R because there's 7 degrees of freedom. And so it's going to be 7 over 2 multiplied by 8.3145. As you can see, these problems are not that bad. So for this one, it's going to be 29.1 joules per mole per Kelvin. So the more complex a molecule becomes, the higher the molar capacity will be. Let's illustrate this fact. So we saw that for a monoatomic gas like helium, the molar heat capacity was 12.47. And for a diatomic molecule like N2, it was 20.79. Now for a molecule with three atoms like H2S, it's even higher. It's 25.95. And here are some other molecules with three atoms, carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and they have values of 28.46, and SO2 is 31.39. So as you can see, monoatomic gases have the lowest molar heat capacity. A molecule with three atoms will have a much higher molar heat capacity. Now, if we compare these three, because they have the same number of atoms, there seems to be a trend between the molar mass of the gas and also the molar heat capacity. For instance, hydrogen has an atomic mass of 1. Sulfur, in the periodic table, has an atomic mass of 32. So the molar mass for H2S is 
grams per mole or atomic mass units. Carbon has a molar mass of 12 and oxygen has an atomic mass of 16. So for carbon dioxide, it's going to be 12 plus 16 times 2, which is about 44 grams per mole. And for sulfur dioxide, that's going to be S, which is 32 plus 16 times 2. So that's about 64 grams per mole. So for a triatomic gas, or a gas molecule with three atoms, notice that as the molar mass increases, the molar heat capacity is increasing. So the basic idea is this. As the complexity of the molecule goes up, the molar heat capacity will go up as well. And so that's it for this video. That's all I got. Thanks for watching, and have a good day.